I was hesitant to even make this video expressing my opinions about the situation with Penn State University until I saw on Twitter that Mike McQuarrie, the man who saw with his own two eyes a young boy being raped and did nothing, will be coaching on Saturday. Let that sink in for a minute. This man, and I hesitate to even call him a man, walked in on Jerry Sandusky balls deep in a seven-year-old's ass and walked away, did nothing. And apparently this is okay. Joe Paterno, not excusing him from anything, any part that he played in this, but he's kind of being the scapegoat in this entire scenario. He gets the shit can and McQuery is still permitted to coach. He saw a child getting raped and didn't call the police. I think he is just as culpable in this entire scenario as Jerry Sandusky himself. The prolific sexual predator who has raped at least, at least 20 boys, some as young as seven years old. If you didn't know that, take a couple of seconds and let it sink in. This man, sexually abused boys as young as seven. I'll count to five and let you process that. I hope that's settled in your brain because I'm still having a hard time fitting it in mine. I have been discussing at length on Twitter this entire scenario for the past couple of days. It's probably driving everyone who doesn't really seem to care a whole lot about children getting raped nuts. But that's my moral priority at this point. People seem to be in some kind of outrage over Joe Paterno getting fired unceremoniously over the telephone last night. Their excuse is that he has been the head coach at Penn State University since 1966. He is the winningest uh, college football coach in collegiate history. That's great. Good for Joe Pa. The problem with that, the thing, the single thing that wrecks all of his accomplishments are the, is the fact that he had knowledge of this for over 13 years. Joe Paterno knew what Jerry Sandusky had done and was doing for 13 years. And he did the absolute bare minimum. That's people's excuse for the ones who are like, well, you can't blame Joe Pa. He really didn't do anything. He fulfilled his legal obligations. He alerted his superiors. That's not good enough. Laws are often stupid. I understand that. But the fact remains that he knew. And all he did was go, hey, boss, I heard Jerry's been butt fucking kids in the shower at halftime. Ain't that some shit? And that's it. That's all he did. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have gotten fired. I firmly believe that this is one of the very, very few things that Penn State has done right in this entire situation. Terminating Joe Paterno was a good move. He needed to go. But he should not have been the first to go. Grant Spanier, the now ex-president of Penn State, should have been the first to go. From the minute this story broke, from the minute it became the one thing that every news outlet in America has been reporting on, number one, for days, he should have gone. He is the president of the university, and he knew about this, and he did nothing just like Joe Paterno did, just like Mike McQuarrie did, just like Curly and Schultz and everybody else who was aware of this horrific situation. They would rather defend a prolific child abuser 
then distance themselves from him. Terminate him at the earliest possible, at the earliest possibility they should have terminated him, prosecuted him, done everything they possibly could have to distance themselves as far as they could have, and they didn't. They used every resource at their disposal to cover this up. And then they started covering up the cover-ups. And this is the result. Penn State is disgraced. I'd like to touch briefly on the new allegations that surfaced today. They are brought up by Mark Madden of 105.9 on Twitter this morning. He has stated a rumor, he is stressing that this is a rumor, and they are as of yet unsubstantiated claims, that Jerry Sandusky and his Second Life charitable organization were, in no small words, whoring children to rich uh, donators 